when I was in high school, I wanted to be a baseball pitcher. Now, I just moved from North Carolina up to the suburbs of Philadelphia. Somebody said, you can't be a baseball player. You never played baseball before. But I thought to myself, well, you know, living in North Carolina, we played out in the woods a lot, and I was pretty damn good at taking a rock and hitting a tree or uh, knocking a tin can off a stump from 50 feet away. And I thought, well, what's the big difference between throwing a rock and throwing a baseball? So I went out for the team. I made the team. Uh, because I was a new kid on the block, they let me pitch one game, start one game. Um, I won the game, wound up uh, striking out numerous batters, and wound up getting a, a, a high school letter in baseball. About a year out of high school, I wanted to ask out the captain of the cheerleaders when we were in high school. And uh, everybody said, you can't do that. She only goes out with, like, the captain of the baseball team and the captain of the uh, football team. She's never going to go out with you. I asked her out. She said yes. And as I'm driving the car on the date, I'm thinking, wait a minute. You can't do that. Now, around the same time, our city, uh, we had what was called a city football league. Every little city around us had their own football team. And... Um, I wanted to be quarterback. Somebody said, you can't do that. You've never been a quarterback before. Are you crazy? Well, I wound up being the quarterback. And in our, in our own little city world that we lived in, our football league, uh, the equivalent of our Super Bowl, well, I took our team to the Super Bowl. Wait a minute. I was told, you can't do that. Fast forward. I'm thinking I want to be a singer. I go to college, become a performing arts major, a theater arts major, music major, and uh, had a teacher take me up to his office after class one time, looked at me straight in the face and very stern look and said, you want to be a singer, don't you? And I said, well, maybe, I don't know. And he said, well, let me tell you, son, you can't do that. You don't have what it takes. Hmm. I wind up going to a performing arts school in San Francisco. About three months later, I'm standing up in front of a sold-out nightclub singing Credence Clearwater Revival's Proud Mary, and the entire club is up dancing while I'm singing. After I got through singing, uh, I got this great round of applause, and as I'm taking my applause, I'm thinking, hmm, wait a minute, you can't do that. Now, while I was in that performing arts school, the director was so impressed with me, he asked, could I give a speech during one of our shows? Could I give a speech uh, about what the school is about and what the school meant to me? And one of my fellow students said, you can't do that. You've never given a speech. You're going to embarrass yourself. Try to get out of it. Well, I wound up writing the speech. I wound up giving the speech. I wound up getting a standing ovation after the speech. And as I'm taking the, uh, the applause, I'm thinking, wait a minute, I was told, you can't do that. Fast forward, I'm in LA and I'm looking for ways to make some extra money. I thought, well, let me teach a class on how to overcome stage fright or how to deal with stage fright. Once again, there was somebody that said, you've never been a teacher before, you can't do that. Well, I wound up teaching a class on that very subject the class was very popular, so popular that I was referred to the Musicians Institute in Hollywood, which at the time was a world-famous music school, and they hired me to um, teach their beginning vocal students stage presence. And as I'm teaching the class, it flashed in my mind, uh-oh, wait a minute, what am I doing here? I was told, you can't do that. Now, as I'm teaching these stage fright classes, somebody just out of the blue suggests, you know, you should be an acting instructor because you're very good at directing and giving people instructions on, on stage performance and in front of a camera and everything. You should be an acting instructor. And of course, there were people that say, you can't do that. Uh, I became a, a very popular acting instructor in LA. Uh, one of my students in LA, uh, 
her father won an Academy Award, her stepfather won an Academy Award, and her cousin was nominated for an Academy Award. She said about me, she was in my acting class, she said about me, best acting class I've ever taken, best teacher I've ever had. I've learned more in Christopher's class than I, and had more fun in Christopher's class than I ever did at the Neighborhood Playhouse, the famous Neighborhood Playhouse. Another one of my students who was in a famous musical group and also in a uh, pretty well-known TV show at the time, she said about me, I learned more in Christopher's class in five weeks than I learned in three months in a, another acting instructor's class who actually was quite well known and had written a few books. Community College of Las Vegas hires me to teach a class in their adult education department. The class was so popular, the administrator came to me and said, you're in such high demand, can you teach a second class? Now, I started teaching two private classes outside of the community college. Those classes became so big sometimes I had to split the class up because there were too many students. Now, during my tenure as an acting instructor, I got this idea about doing not an actor's showcase because actor's showcases, the actor only gets up for 30 seconds or a minute or two minutes and does something in front of the casting directors or the agents to see if they can get some work or get hired. Um, I thought that was very unnatural. I know it's the way it's done and it's the standard, but I just thought it was weird and unnatural that an actor has to get up and show their chops within a short period of time. So I thought, you know what? Let's have the actor do entire scenes. In fact, let's make an entire show out of it, a two, three hour show. We'll have an actor do a scene 10 minutes long with maybe two or three or four actors in the scene. Everybody laughed at me. You can't do that. People are not gonna come out and see a bunch of beginning actors perform. They're not gonna come out. The agents are not gonna come out and watch this. Well, we did 17 shows and uh, we filled the theater, I think about 15 of those 17 times. The agents came out, the people came out. It was uh, a success from start to finish. So I did 17 of those shows with primarily actors and beginning actors. Then I thought, well, you know what? Why don't we open it up to not only just actors, but anybody that maybe wants to be a singer or a dancer or a comedian or a magician. So I started something called the Performer Showcase, uh, where anybody could come in. Uh, and it could be beginners, it could be experienced, whatever. And people, la if they laughed at me the first time with the Actors Showcase, they really laughed at me this time because I wanted to charge money. And people said, nobody is going to come and pay money to see a bunch of beginning performers some were beginners, a lot of them were beginners, and then some were experienced. But they said, nobody's going to come out and see a bunch of beginning performers and pay money. Are you crazy? Well, we wound up doing 10 shows, and uh, nine, eight, I believe eight of those shows were sold out. Some of them were standing room only, and we got standing ovations on four or five of those shows. And I'm thinking, as we're taking the applause, wait a minute. I was told years ago, you can't be an acting instructor. You can't do a showcase that lasts for two or three hours. You can't do a performer showcase. Nobody's going to pay money. Hmm. I was told I couldn't do all that. Then I decided I wanted to do a talk show. People laughed at me and said, you can't do a talk show. You don't have any damn experience doing a talk show. Well, I wound up having my own local talk show here in Vegas and in the... I was told you can't do that. Now of all these things I've mentioned here, my most notable achievement by far was a few years ago, I'm with a girlfriend at the time, we're in this very large room together. It's like an office, but a gigantic office. It's probably 50 feet across maybe this room. And we're sitting on one side, I'm eating a banana. When I get through with a banana, I have this banana peel in my hand. I look across the room to this little tiny garbage can. And I said, watch this. I'm gonna put this banana peel in the garbage can. She looked at me and giggled and laughed and said, are you kidding me? You can't do that. 
That's a banana peel. You can't throw that across the room and hit the garbage can. Well, I kind of took aim, picked up the banana peel, flung it across the room, swish. Nothing but net. As I was sitting there in all my glory, uh, having just put the banana peel in the garbage, pan, uh, garbage can from like 50 feet away, wait a minute, she told me, you can't do that. Now the point about mentioning all these things, you know, in and of themselves, they're not that big of achievements. There's, you know, millions of people around the world that have certainly achieved a lot and accomplished a hell of a lot more than I have. My point is, if anybody ever tells you you can't do something and you really want to do it and you have a passion for it and you want to commit yourself to it, if they tell you you can't do it, just look them straight in the eye and just go 